back to Iran here in just a second. I want to share with you a column today, Victor Davis Hanson at townhall.com. VDH, as he's popularly known, has uh, written many places. He's a He's actually a Greek historian, expert Greek historian, and he's a farmer in California, and he's just uh, writes brilliantly. And this essay he has written today is on education, and particularly uh, the academy, academe, uh, higher education. I have come to believe, now we all know that the left has taken over and corrupted the education establishment, that's not an argument. What I am new in believing is I think the corruption of education, the takeover of education, and the things happening there have actually had a much more damaging effect on the country than even the pop culture coming out of Hollywood, music, books, TVs, entertainment media, because education, obviously, by definition, deals with the educated class. And they've ruined them. We, it just, it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute disaster. I, I shared with you yesterday this, this, this tirade from a female professor at Rutgers who just let loose with all the hatred and bile that she feels for the country at large. And she's teaching it. It's okay, you know, people understand they're going to have their opinions, but she teaches it with the force of authority behind her. And in a, she wouldn't even be able to get a job at a university 50 years ago. They wouldn't have even entertain the thought, but now with affirmative action and quotas and diversity and the multicultural curricula and that whole takeover, it's a different world. And I think this piece by Victor Davis Hanson perfectly outlines the complete collapse and failure of the university system after 50 years of unchecked liberal experimentation. A couple of pull quotes to start. A bachelor's degree is no longer proof that any graduate can read critically or write effectively. National college interest test scores have generally declined the last few years and grading standards have as well. Too often, universities emulate greenhouses where fragile adults are coddled as if they were hothouse orchids. Hypersensitive students are warned about microaggressions that in the real world would be imperceptible. Here's the beginning. Modern American universities used to assume four goals. See if you recognize these four, by the way. First, their general education core taught students how to reason inductively and imparted an aesthetic sense through acquiring knowledge of Michelangelo, the Battle of Gettysburg, Medea, King Lear, Beethoven's Ode to Joy and Astronomy, and Euclidean Geometry. That used to be the general education core, how to reason inductively, impart an aesthetic sense that acquiring knowledge, through acquiring knowledge, of a diversity of things like Michelangelo, Battle of Gettysburg, on and on. Second, campuses encouraged edgy speech and raucous expression and exposure to all sorts of weird ideas and mostly unpopular thoughts. College talk was never envisioned as boring, politically correct megaphones echoing orthodox pieties. Third, Four years of college trained students for productive careers. That's why you went. After four years, you were assumed to be qualified to embark on a career. Implicit was the university's assurance that its degree was a wise career investment. That's why it mattered. It's why having that degree, that sheepskin mattered, is what it said about you. And finally... 
universities were not monopolistic price gougers. They sought affordability to allow access to a broad middle class that had neither federal subsidies nor lots of money. The American undergraduate university is now failing on all four counts. And here's the pull quote again. The bachelor's degree is no longer proof that any graduate can read critically or write effectively. Too often universities emulate greenhouses where fragile adults are coddled as if they were hothouse orchids. Hypersensitive students are warned about microaggressions that in the real world would be imperceptible. Apprehensive professors are sometimes supposed to offer trigger warnings that assume students are delicate Victorians who cannot handle landmark authors such as Joseph Conrad or Mark Twain. For example, can't read Huck Finn anymore. That's racist, don't you know? The language, the terms, it's too upsetting. It's too offensive. It causes too many students to be upset like Savannah Guthrie was with Rand Paul. You can't have that. Safe spaces are designed on campus now, where traumatized students can be shielded from supposedly hurtful or unwelcome language that should not exist in a just and fair world, like one in which Rand Paul lives. One might have concluded from all this doting that 21st century American youths, their culture, rap lyrics, rough language, spring break indulgences, sexual promiscuity, epidemic drug usage, is not savage. Hip culture seems to assume that its 18-year-old participants are jaded, sophisticated adults. Yet the university treats them as if they are preteens in need of vicarious chaperones. Universities entice potential students with all sorts of easy loan packages, hip orientations, and perks like high-tech recreation centers, upscale dorms. On the backside of graduation, such bait-and-switch attention vanishes when it's time to help departing students find jobs. College often turns into a six-year experience. The unemployment rate of college graduates is at near record levels. Universities have either failed to convince employers that English or history majors make ideal job candidates, or they have failed to ensure that such bedrock majors can, in fact, speak, write, and reason. The collective debt of college students and graduates is more than $1 trillion. Such loans result from astronomical tuition costs that for decades have risen more rapidly than the rate of inflation. I've always pointed this out. You know, the, the left has their, their, their enemies list. It's big oil. It's big retail. It's big pharmaceutical, big tobacco, big auto, you name it. And they're always wailing and moaning about how expensive things are and how the average little guy can't afford it anymore. But you never hear them utter such complaints about academe. I love that word, academe. It's such a pretentious word. You never hear them concerned about the rising costs of attending the academy. You never hear them complain about gouging via tuition. And there's a reason why. The people that work at the academy are the actual flakers and formers of skulls full of mush that arrive there eager to learn and they are converted via propaganda and indoctrination into robotic mind-numbed liberals. And they're worth whatever we pay them. They couldn't make any money outside the academy. They're too wacko, oddball, extreme. But put them in a classroom and it's made to order. That's why there is never... I mean, the university, the American education system is it, folks. That's where young, impressionable skulls full of mush are turned into lifelong liberals. Like Marie Harf. She's one of... Millions serving as a great example. Today's camp high 
have a higher administrator to student ratio than ever before. We never, though, hear about it's so unfair how much money the CEO, the college president, makes versus the students who actually make up the university, like you hear about at any other private sector business. Is it too late for solutions? For many youths, vocational school is preferable to college. Americans need to appreciate that training to become a master auto mechanic, a paramedic, or skilled electrician is as valuable to society as a cultural anthropology or feminine, feminist studies curriculum. Administrators should decide whether they see students as mature, independent adults who handle life's vicissitudes with courage and without need for restrictions on free expression? Or should students remain perennial, weepy adolescents, requiring constant sheltering, solicitousness, and self-esteem building? Diversity might be better redefined in its most ancient and idealistic sense as differences in opinion and thought rather than just variety in appearance, race, gender, or religion. The now predictable ideology of college graduation speakers should instead be a mystery. Students should not be able to guess the politics of their college president. Ideally, they might encounter as many Christians as atheists, as many reactionaries as socialists, or as many Tea Partiers as Occupy Wall Street protesters, reflecting the normal divisions of society. Let's see, that's the key. There is no diversity on campus. There is no openness. There is no multiple points of view. There is no exposure to all of these great different ways of thinking and looking at things in America. Nope, there's only one way now. And you must conform to it. You must conform to the liberal heterodoxy or you are forever going to be ostracized on your very own campus. Finally, federal government should hold universities fiscally accountable. The availability of federal grants ought to be pegged to a college's ability to hold annual tuition increases to the rate of inflation. Anyway, it's a good piece, especially the beginning where he reminds everybody what the four core elements of a university education used to be.